You are now listening to Between Us Girls, the podcast, where we discuss life's fuckeries and then some over wine. our show this is michelle danielle and sharonda and this is between Between us Us girls Girls, where you get the real raw and uncourt conversations and if you are tuning in for the first time hey whatever fuck you danielle (laughs) um if you're tuning in for the first time we thank you for staying tuned in and you can always find us on stitcher soundcloud google play and itunes on Facebook, we're at Between Us Girls the Podcast. Instagram, Between Us Girls Podcast. On Twitter, at Girl Talk and Wine. And if you would like to be wonderful fans and support us in our everyday podcast struggles, <laughs> you know, any amount will do. I think over five dollars though, y'all. So don't be cheap. You can find <laughs> us at www.patreon.com forward slash Between Us Girls. Dot com. Now, we're not begging for anything, okay? <laughs> but this shit is not cheap, and okay. we love our fans. We love to bring you guys new things. We have a lot of stuff in the works, so that's why we're asking for support. If you don't want to support us by, you know, with finances, at least, you know, subscribe, listen, rate, comment, all that other grand shit. Yes, if you guys support us, we actually have something in the works. Danielle's going to dress up as a clown. What? Oh, my God. We- <laughs> <The mother. laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not attending that. I'm terrified okay. of clowns, so no. All right, so Sharonda, what are we sipping on? We are sipping on uh, Trevento uh, Melbeck, and it's from Argentina. The vintage is 2014, and drumroll please, mm. the alcohol content is 13.5%. Well, that's not bad. Okay. It's not to Michelle's standards, but you know, it'll it'll get the job done, you know? Um, I am so tired of being called an alcoholic. I'm just joking. Book. It's a low-key alcoholic. Though. You know, when you go to AA, though, when you walk in, they talk about these rooms. What so room? we're in a room. So, yes, maybe I do what? drink a little bit. You walk bit. in and be like, my name is Michelle. They'd be like, we love you, Michelle. They just like, say welcome or whatever. Oh, Yeah. That's so sweet. You stand in it. Rehab like is say. for quitters. Fuck that. I know. You're a G. <laughs> I You're only a went a G. couple times. Yeah. No, fuck that. Rehab's for quitters. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so we do have um, a very special fan of the week. Dun, 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 this dun. is a super fan. Okay, when I tell y'all that this person is really a fan, like, Danielle and I went to the radio station. I think she was the only person who actually listened to our segment (laughs) on the radio. Danielle Franklin Battle. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. She she actually said she has two more bottles of wine for us, too. Oh, yeah. That's why I heart this lady, man. I know she's always supporting us. She's on uh, in our Facebook group. Is she on Twitter? Um, I'm I not sure, but I know on Facebook, I know Facebook she, she, she goes giggles hard. She at does, everything. Yeah. I think we met her hard. on Twitter, though, I think. I think that's what... I you know, know. it don't matter what we met. Timberly yeah. from MBMP? Who? Timberly Battle. Yeah. I think that's her sister-in-law. Oh. oh. Well, we don't care where we met you. We I love know. you. Yeah. You was here, and we love you, girl. Yeah, yeah. We really appreciate you, Danielle. You are the epitome of fan of the week like if somebody is trying to be fan of the week what they need to do is Uh-oh. just look at you oh watch you and realize you know how, Man, that's how to do that shit and if y'all heavy. are in our facebook group that's like a straight that is the shadiest fucking shade okay <laughs> to every previous fan of the week so that's michelle starting some shit with this one brian can fight me because <laughs> he's the only person that's gonna care about that no i know well, you know misty, misty Mike, Mike. I was like misty misty, misty like, and brian well, wait a hey. minute <laughs> But I'm saying for people who haven't been fan of the week. Yeah. Right, right. Because, you know, it it makes me feel some type of way to post an episode in the group mm-hmm. and people just look at it. But then if you post something like, if you got a fat ass and somebody You got on a sundress. It, right, right. Like you got on a sundress and the wind blows and your booty show, what you going to do? Do it jiggle to the left or to the right, <laughs> right. real fast. And like, everybody's like, 
I'm Ooh. gonna do this. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm like, all you gotta do is fucking click, click the link. That's it's <laughs> That's very it. simple. Just like y'all did with that Jay Z album. Just man, come on. Oh Stop my god, me. it was so good. Oh my god. <laughs> You're always whispering. <laughs> Because that's my really excited voice. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. so we have a guest. Acho from the Millennial Minutes. I don't even know what to call us because, yes, I'm a member. <laughs> Forum panel group. <laughs> um, next month, we're going to do our premiere show. Um, everything's a show for me. Everything. Life is a show. Life is a show. The panel, the forum is a show. Um, he's here. He's going to talk with us a little bit about masculinity because that is actually part of the topic for next month's panel. I think we're going to talk about, you know, what defines masculinity and who defines masculinity. So, Acho, please say hello. Joy, sit down. <laughs> hello. Thank you for uh, having me. I'm super excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Um, do you want to tell us anything about yourself before we get started? Um. Yeah, I'm actually from Dallas. Moved to Houston four and a half years ago. I love the city. I don't think I'm moving back. Right, because you know Houston's the best. My bad. <laughs> Houston is absolutely the best. I love it here. Um, and I have listened to a few of the uh, podcasts, and I must say I'm thoroughly impressed, and I love what you guys do. It's, it's great work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you can uh, patreon.com. I got you. I got you. Show us what your wallet though. What that wallet do? Oh, that's a new one. What that wallet do? <laughs> Next time Danielle's gonna be like patron, and then Charlotte's gonna yell out, "What that wallet do?" Like real ratchet. What's though. your sign? I'm a uh, Gemini. Oh, Jesus Christ! Lord. Help us, yeah. Lord. Just get your blanket out. <laughs> Help us. Get your blanket and socks. To. I need two of them. You got two personalities. I only have one right now. Two great personalities. But oh wow. Okay. All right. So we are gonna talk about what masculinity is a couple questions uh first one what does it mean to be masculine if you want to start there what does it mean to be masculine you're what, the only man in the room what do, you, what do you think it means to be masculine um ironically enough i don't have a definition for masculinity i think that it's something that society has forced upon us and especially with minorities that um you have this whole concept of you have to be tough. You have to be, you know, your ego has to be out here. You have to lift weights. You have to be strong. You have to be able to change a, a tire, tire, oil change, et cetera, et cetera. I, if, to me, it's just, I think it's just masculinity is what you make of it, you know, and what you feel like is, makes you, you as an individual. That's, that's just me, though. That's not good enough. I'm going to need you to do better than that. <laughs> Sharonda, what's your that's- definition? I mean, I'm not going to say that. I mean, I agree with you to a certain extent that it literally is not like one act or one, you know, thing or a couple things that you can do. I feel like it's more so just maybe the way that you, you know, you carry yourself. Because, I mean, I guess we define, and I'm not going to say we like society, but people define, you know, people as with their traits. Like you may, somebody may act feminine. Acting feminine means, you know, you know, hair, whatever, mannerisms, whatever the case may be. So I feel like masculine is, you know, kind of you can define it the same way you can, you know, like somebody being feminine. Or if you see a girl that acts like a guy, you'll say, oh, my God, she's not feminine at all. So mm-hmm. do you see what I'm saying? Like, I mean, what maybe characteristics do you think? I don't think it's necessarily an action because my husband won't change a tire to save his life. He will call Geico on your ass. He will call triple A. He ain't changing the oil. He none of that shit. Like, no. But I still think he's masculine. You, you know, Sharonda, that was my next question was, do you have to be a man to be masculine? And I don't, I don't think so. so. Well, when I think of masculinity, I think of, like, being an alpha male, like, being in control. So, like you? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, we I'm just found out Danielle's it. a man. I'm not, I'm not <clears> going to no, she's a man um, I think but I think she has a very strong pe- personality uh, being decisive mm-hmm. because you're like a decision maker yeah like, I that's agree. what I like you're you're you have a certain sense of power and I think of you being strong um in a sense of physicality mm-hmm. more less than you know mental like I, I think of a woman being um mentally strong and emotionally strong right. versus a man being physically 
uh, strong. Right. Those are the things that I think of when I think in terms of masculinity. And to answer the question about whether or not a woman can be masculine, she definitely can um, exhibit those traits. I mean, you can be butch like young mom. So, like, but you I'm know, gonna I need you, you need to, to be... stop there. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't think you have to be butch because I'm just saying like that's that's just an example. But but that's that goes back to what your definition is of masculinity because my definition of masculinity is really just a leader, especially in a familial structure. Hundred percent. Who's gonna be going. a leader? Yep. If I say I'm falling short in this area, are you gonna come and you know pick up the slack? So just like with, you know, uh, two females who are together, there's always going to be one who's the masculine and always going to be one who's the feminine because that's just how relationships work. Or they could be interchange, like an interchange, like one, you know, one of them could be super feminine, but she doesn't cook, but the other does, you know what I mean? Like it can, I think it's interchangeable. I don't think that there's just, like I said, like you said, it's not one just set definition, but taking care of your family, you know what I mean? you your mom or your wife, or if you have kids, whatever, taking care of that situation like that, to me, defines, you know, masculinity. I don't know. So but what does it man. mean in today's society? Like, is it different than traditional masculinity? I know, Acho, you don't have a definition, but do you think that society's definition of masculinity has changed at all? Um, not necessarily. Uh, in some aspects, the whole traditional masculine male, head of the household, taking care of the family, anything's broke, you fix it. Um, that's still kind of the core of it all. But I mean, 2017, I mean, things have changed. I mean, the head of the household doesn't equate to the breadwinner per se. Right. Um, so it's, it, it varies to me, but mm-hmm. I mean, then again, I'm just one person who believes a certain way. Yeah. But I mean, there's probably a lot of people who, who feel like you just like Sharonda. Sharonda has mentioned, and I remember you and I, when we had our sit down with the group, you kind of mentioned this, you know, like when your wife says, hey, I need you to do something, you know, you're helpful. You'll do it even if it's yeah. washing dishes or whatever. And like Sharonda oh, said, you know, she and Omar, they take turns kind of doing washing stuff. Washing dishes, so, cooking, yeah, all of that stuff. And in tra- the traditional sense, like that's not, there's no swap there. Like I know for me, I don't want to go outside and cut the grass. Now I will if I absolutely have to, but I would leave that up to the man because yeah. I don't want to. And only mm-hmm. because I guess my dad would go outside and cut the grass mm-hmm. weekly. My mom would take him water and that would be it. <laughs> but you <laughs> don't, you, I guess I think that now you have defined roles less and less yeah. in mm-hmm. terms of a relationship. And that's one of the ways that um, masculinity has changed over the years because mm-hmm. you now have went certain, certain women, actually one of my, my coworkers, she actually likes to cut the grass. I, mean, I was her. just getting ready to say, she that's what I do to, she, too for exercise. She does, she does that. So, I mean, that's her thing. And so her husband doesn't cut the grass. She cuts the grass. Like, she likes it for whatever I don't see anything reason. wrong with it. So, There's I nothing mean, wrong with it. And I'm going to yeah. tell y'all why I don't want to do it. Because the time I went outside to learn how to cut the grass, I got cussed out because I wasn't doing, doing it right. It. Yeah. And I could not push the mower. And he was like, if you don't get your ass out of the way. If that was it, so like Less at this high. point, maybe I'm scarred. Maybe I'm scarred. Yeah. I, don't, I just, I, w- I mean, I was just saying that because you don't necessarily have to associate it and act like she wanted to say earlier yeah, with, with with being masculine or not. But I think that in one right. way that it's changed in in media or in television and movies is like if you look back, like in the fifties, mm-hmm. like you had like a Rock Hudson. Like, or June Cleaver and them. Yeah, right. and so, and they had yeah. very, you know, archetypal type roles. And Just like I was talking about in Pleasantville. They were very specific. Like, so yeah. the man was very strong. He went out. He made all the money. He financed everything. And the woman kind of, like, sat there and cleaned the house and waited on him to make a decision. And so now you don't have that And don't forget, anymore. you need to make sure that before your husband gets home from work that you've showered Oh, yeah. And comb your hair <laughs> and, and put on your nice dress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, while you cook dinner, though. Yes. In those heels. Don't forget that. Right. Like, He's not don't, there, and your apron no. and all that shit. <laughs> right. Uh, and oh, and when he comes in the door, make sure you have a scotch ready. Absolutely. Yeah. Bitch, that. Two ice cubes. <laughs> not three, not one. Bitch, two. Right. But <laughs> man, I lost my I mean, yeah, but I mean, I we let. I want Angel to talk more because we're kind of. See how we're masculinating the conversation? Masculinating? <laughs> Good masculinating. One. I just made that word Good up. Get out of my business. No, um, I could use my uh, parents as an example. Uh, my dad was the one who, for the most part, worked. But my mom did mow the grass. She loved mowing the grass. It was her thing. That was 
her exercise. I'm telling she you. She wanted it mowed a certain way, so it, that just became her thing. She cooked, cleaned, made sure, you know, uh, the kids were taken care of. You know, when my dad got home, food was ready. Um, does your mom work? No, she does not work. I mean, she does work, actually. Uh, taking care of the house. Well, in the house. I mean, outside. <laughs> Come of the through home. with that. Best I like that clean up. I mean, that <laughs> is work. Clean it up. That's right. That's right. That's totally work. It's a lot of work. And, and the reason it why is. I know it's work is because I do both. Yeah. Right? So I'm always going to fall short in some area. Yeah. And actually, um, this has nothing to do with the topic, but one of the vendors I work with, she was crying. And I was like, well, are you okay? And she's like, well, you know, I have to be here at work, but my son, you know, I had some issues with him. At the dinner. It was dumb, but she was upset about it. He had cavities or something. She was like, oh, I feel like I'm not being a good parent, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Girl. you know, it is work. Taking care of home is work. And I think and, and that's why the roles have kind of changed because now we have to do both. Instead of being able, because I would love to be able to run a house and just be like, this is how I'm on it. Look at my pillows. They fluffed. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm about to go out here to the supermarket Oh, there's Betty. Hey, girl. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Talking about nothing. And said, casserole I'm recipe. Work, casserole recipe. Right. Heels. <laughs> right. Um, but I think it's always supposed to be the man who's a disciplinarian. And sometimes it's the mom who's like, I'm going to kick your ass. My mom was a disciplinarian. I was right. just getting ready uh-huh. to say. You know? Yeah. In my house, it was my grandmother. Ooh. You know? Mm-mm. So. Dad was easy. My grandpa was easy. You can get away with Murder. But yeah. my grandmother, oh hell no! You bring right. your ass. Up yeah, my father head. was more of the quiet type. He wasn't. Mm-hmm. He didn't say too much. My mom was very vocal. Very, she was very active, so to speak, <laughs> when it came to think discipline. That it's always been like it is now. We just saw more of those traditional roles being pushed by the media, more than. Well, you know, I think that if you look at the way men are now in movies and TV, versus you know, thirty, forty years ago. I mean, men are kind of like bumbling idiots. No. Like, they're really kind of like docile. Like, if you, unless outside of a straight up action movie like um, James Bond or something like that, where uh-huh. he's ha- he has to make decisions uh-huh. and, you know, he has right to on the make spot. decisions. Yeah, he has to make decisions right there on the spot. He has to be very decisive, you know, and calculated about things outside of those type of roles. Like, men, they like. Like King of Queens. That like kind of yeah. I mean, exactly. So it, where Doug. where it's very noticeable that the woman is he like he's there. You she know where that takes started. Care of everything and she she runs everything. Why does it start? I feel like that's how Cliff Huxtable was. Yeah, kind of. he was. He but was very I'm, much like that. But if you think back, I feel like that's always been the tradition. The woman has always run the household, so to speak. But just listen to your mother, dad. Yes, dad was just like her I security, like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up if you don't do what your mama said do. Right. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't make that shit come to me. But, I mean, we all know that, what's the old saying? That the, the man is the head of the household, but the woman is the neck or right. whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, that, I really feel like that's the truth. Because my grandfather's word was, like, the final say-so, end-all, be-all. But my grandma ran that shit. Like, it didn't matter what the fuck we were talking about. But at the end of the day, if you didn't do what she said, you were going to answer to his ass. You didn't want to answer to him once it became, you know, an issue. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's always been like that people just never really said it or never it was yeah. never prevalent or like you said media and stuff never right. trumped it up like because that. when it when feminism started it was like well we're gonna talk about what's really going on mm-hmm. i'm in here doing all the shit i might as well fucking go to work too right but anyway we're not gonna get into that because yeah, we already have a feminism <laughs> episode yeah that's a whole other <laughs> that's, that's that's a whole. <laughs> so um but no. i will say first oh. i do think that church that's, finger and everything yeah church, church finger, finger. I don't, <laughs> I will say that that may be part of why there was a shift because of feminism. So men mm. felt like they had to step back and and let her because what is what is it that she wants? Does she really want the control? Like, what am I supposed to do now? You know what? Yeah. No, I don't even think that's it because now we're like, why do I have to tell you to do everything? I know, but I'm saying like at that time when feminism was at its height, you know, it's just like, mm. well, what does she want? She wants to be able to come home and she wants to pay the bills. Or she wants to have some control in the house to have a say-so. Like, what is it? So maybe now I need to fall back. I feel like she don't know what she wants. Okay, but here's my question. We ain't going to say that. <laughs> I mean, because really, like, okay, here's my issue with that. We want to, We he's asking, do we want control? Do we want to do this and everything? But like I said, at the same time, you're still like, I still want you to lead. 
So you don't know what you want. If you can't you're have your cake. And, yeah, you can't, can't have, have your both. cake and eat it too. But yeah. why though? Oh Lord. Okay. So okay. next question. Who wants control? But I mean, I don't get that. Because who, who wants, wants control? No. This fool? <laughs> That was not a literal question. Oh. That was more so just like a figurative, like who wants to have just complete control over a fa- uh, uh, the, the wife, the kids, all that. Like it's a it's a coming together. I mean, I don't know, I guess because my living situation, but it's it to me, it's a, a joint effort. Like we run the household together. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm. think that, I think it's weird to just, I said we're blah, 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 and that's it. Like the fuck? Are you for real? Like, no way. Maybe that's why women wanted to go to work. Because they were like, well, if I go to work, then I can say no. Yeah, because cause you have a leg to stand on and you can support yourself if you want to leave. But well, it ain't about leaving, though, so much as no, just saying, saying like, I, maybe I don't want that color car. Right, but I'm saying you Bitch, have a leg not to getting stand it. on I don't now. give a fuck if I work. I, can, I don't like green. No. Like, I, can, <laughs> I can now buy it myself. Like, you know, that's what it means. Okay, so next question. <laughs> I'm not even. Aware. Where does man weave fall on the masculinity scale? <laughs> man, a man, like Excuse a fake me? man bun or a fake afro. Is is that like a relevant thing for men? Like, is that masculine? I wish we had a camera right here, right now, to get the facial expression. <laughs> look, look, I'll, 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 I'll she's say so this. Um, I know, like she's got her if, barber. If that's face. if that's what you want to do, that's. That's your business, but I, I mean, no, I'm not. That's not a so a I mean, masculine thing. <laughs> I mean, you wear not you even wear. that. It's not. It's it's more so that. I mean, it's like why? Like for men, like, <laughs> and I only say that because like if if my hair was, you know, falling out or whatever, I'm going bald. I mean, straight up bald headed. I mean, I shave it off. I mean, we go Jordan style. Yeah, but style. you could probably pull that off. There are some men who would look like a penis. Confidence. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. You better, have you better seen swag Sam it the fuck out, right? You swag have to be, it out. You have, to be, you have to be confident in yourself, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> look, the bald head is not for everyone. I mean, I have friends who are bald headed. It looks weird, but they're confident in it. Hey, you like it. I love it. It's good. Just just roll with it. But man, we let's, let's be man honest weave. here. I'd, I'd prefer not to see that. But what's the difference okay. between a man weave and like, because remember, we have the same shoes, you and I. We That's have fine. that same The that leopard same print shoes. Loafer. I'm okay with that. What's the difference between wearing a shoe that's like a, I guess, a unisex and, you know, getting a fake weave just like Because um, they're women both feminine. Do. Not necessarily feminine, oh but God. that would make it like, I guess, unisex, right? <laughs> oh is we- weave is now unisex. <clears throat> yes? It's Unisex weave? What? It's <laughs> unisex weave. Yeah. So you can get so. the, a detachable <laughs> fake beard and it's still cool. Well, it's I have a chin hair. It, I've got like nine. Oh my <laughs> so no, okay, so so we're not, okay, so man weave is not masculine, okay. Um, <laughs> not, not even that it's not masculine, it's just wow. not, I mean, it's just a no. I'm it's sorry, it's a no, no for me. It's, it's a no for me. It's a, it's a no for me, pop, though. Correct? Yeah, it's a... It's a hell no. A life faux pas. So yeah, life. <laughs> <laughs> You're failing at life because you now have a glue on Afro. A quick have y'all seen it? <laughs> yeah, quickly. A man bun weave. But you oh know what? God. Bosley, they do hair transplant surgery and stuff like that. Like, is that that's different? different that's though. Different. That's yeah. how is that different? Because that's not trash. Because that's, that's your not hair. Glue. They literally take hair follicles from like the back or wherever else in your like in the middle. I think they plug you if it's long enough, and they retransplant your shit on your shit. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's your hair. It's I all mean, all you. So if it's somebody shit, else hair, then it's then it's, a it's not the hair of a yak, bitch. It's not a yak, bitch. What the fuck? I don't know where the fuck we've come from. Shut up. Somebody anyway, Malaysian? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this fool's like, I don't know where we've come from. Do y'all go to a farm and just shear animals and make the shit? A yak, bitch. A yak. It could be wild. <laughs> a fucking yak of all the animals. I, yes. I ain't heard nobody say yak in about 25 years. A yak? Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Sharon. Fuck you. A yak, a yak has long hair. Where the fuck My- are yaks at? <laughs> mountains or some shit she's like they just go and they find all y'all, of y'all and then they cut the hair and they, they dye it and they straighten it and shit and put it first in the of all fuck y'all because y'all know what the fuck i mean i'm saying it i'm, I'm, I'm on his side because <laughs> no. there are I, I no tracks that. there are no tracks anywhere there is no gluing situation like 
that shit is not for men. I don't give a damn. Like, stop. You know, I got this chef in my job that's like trying to do his man bun thing. And I'm just like, he's like, I put a perm on my hair. Fuck it. Is it a black guy? No, he's not black. Oh, like a white perm or a black perm? No, he got a black perm. And he's a brown man. I'm going to leave it at that. But at the end of the day, he was just like, fuck it. I'm going to just sell some tracks in and get my, get my shit going, blah, blah. And I was like, bro, if you do that, like, so I'm unfriending you in life. Like, I feel you, you like can't. there's a lot of shade coming from your area because you have this naturally long Indian. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's no fucking shade. Yeah. Indian. <laughs> That's why you're like, I don't know where weave it's, comes from. No, Does it come from a yak? born yak. You're right. <laughs> this is all natural. Natural yet. born, yeah. <laughs> okay, but except I'm a human, motherfucker. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, but but I feel like it's kind of the same. I just don't. That's not. Have y'all seen the Baza commercial? The, the black dude got the chili bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. He just gets because the, he got his he hair was, follicles transplanted. He was fucking with the George <laughs> Jefferson and got it, got it. But I mean, because it's still your hair, like it's literally going to be growing from your scalp. But isn't that what women say when they get a weave? I'm wearing it. It's mine. No, bitch, you bought it at the store. This shit is like literally taking your own hair follicles and putting it back on your shit. You're just moving some shit around. Do you think we could get like a sponsorship package from <laughs> Bosley? Because you are really caping hard as fuck. I'm shit. caping for him. Fuck that. Oh, wow. Okay, well, now that we've talked about that, I think it's probably time to move on to our game. But before we get to our game, I want to take a minute to talk about our audio video company. Lion's Heart Audio Visual Services. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch sound like a, this ad is brought to you by. <laughs> is women owned and women run. And they're awesome. And they are awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys have been listening since episode, like, what, 17 or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our shit has been extremely on point. When people's mouths are by the microphone, everything sounds really good. <laughs> Shady fucking bitch. <laughs> and if you are looking for audio, video services, or if you're looking to rent an event space, you can always go to lionsheartav.com. And reach out to the fabulous Naya. Shout out to Naya. Woo-hoo. For all your services and stuff. Yeah. She's our nerd. We love her. We heart her. Okay. So we got a game. Danielle, you going to do the game or <clears throat> no? Um, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. So um, we're putting you in the hot seat. I'm okay with that. <laughs> you okay with that? <laughs> no. yeah. We're going to play a game. It's called Real Stat or F That. Basically, you just have to tell if the statement that i read out if it is true or no you think it's real or like no nah, it's just some bullshit i don't know why i'm laughing so hard at that i feel like we say or no so i was just getting that's like a, show. i think we should get some shirts like dot 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 or no or no yeah because sure. that's the going theme here yeah sorry go ahead okay so the first one is Four out of ten males feel they lack the qualities and abilities that partners look for in a man. Are you all right? I think that's that's real. It is. Good answer. Good answer. You're right. It is. Okay. Oh, tink, tink. I know, right? So that means like everybody you meet. It's like, I ain't never going to be shit. She ain't going to want me. Oh, they feel like they don't have anything to offer. So 250, y'all ain't shit, though. (laughs) I reduced that fraction. You like that? (laughs) Okay, so men that identify with the peacemaker masculinity type are more likely to be bisexual. (laughs) What kind of dumbass (laughs) shit? Everybody was like, uh, what? (laughs) I'm a fucking ass to that. That is a Danielle stat, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's shit. I don't give a damn what nobody said. That can't be accurate. Did you make that up? I did. This okay. bitch, I'm telling you. <laughs> that bitch is at home, laying in her bed, watching fucking House of Cards. Was like, ooh, you know what? Yeah. Click, click, click. This bitch got to type it. I swear to God. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, so, the next one is 85% of men feel women have unrealistic expectations of men. Mm. <laughs> His face was like, hell yeah. <laughs> a word? I would say that's accurate. 
It's actually false because it's lower. It's, it's lower. Yeah. What is the percentage? See, that's why, that's why I made the face. I was like... <laughs> Actually, was, I was second guess guessing what? myself. Don't do that. How you gonna win the car on Wheel of Fortune if you don't take a chance? Thank you, bro. I took a chance. Oh man. I took a chance, but I said it was true. <laughs> I was wrong. I mean not a chance. You follow your first mind. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. All men <laughs> see, I, see I know this is false when it starts with all men. Nah, false. Yeah. You, don't even have to, you don't even have to finish it. False. Started, okay, okay. False. You want me to read it? Okay. All men smell like outside after being in the Houston heat for 15 minutes and must shower immediately upon entering their homes. I want to say that's everybody. (laughs) Man, women, dog, child, whoever. That is a sexist (laughs) question. (laughs) All men smell like outside. (laughs) But now but now you see that's a Danielle. You know what a Danielle fact is, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fucked up. <laughs> oh my god, I can't with these questions. I'm done. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this lady. Okay. Um. Ninety nine point. Stop laughing. <laughs> we'll just go with false. <laughs> right. Ninety nine point nine percent of men are unfaithful, yet require full loyalty from their partners. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally false, and I resent that. <laughs> or you could just say I'm the I'm the point one percent. Only point one percent. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd like to think that I am case. the point one percent. There you go. There you go. Why do I feel like that's a true? That's statement? a true statement. Good answer. I feel Good like answer. that's a true Good fucking answer. statement, man. Ninety-nine point <laughs> nine. Okay. You All right. Need a better number. Do like ninety-nine point eight. I know, right? I, mean, I feel like she ate an edible before she started that. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> so the last question is, do four out of five men have Michelle fucked up? <laughs> do, 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 oh, I mean, do, do. I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah. You, you are, are correct. correct. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him what he's won, Bob. <laughs> Well, you want a glass of your own wine. <laughs> yes. yes. Can't go wrong with a Malbec, though, so I'm okay. Right. Okay, so, Acho, for real, though, like, mm-hmm. what do you hope to share with the world by, you know, starting the forum? Okay, so, funny story. The, the forum kind of started um, as a, a Facebook post when I was, I was kind of just scrolling through Facebook Killing Time, and I noticed some people trying to define what a man is like how a man should dress, how he should act. After the romp him, uh, after the romp him kind of started though, you know. And oh, I actually and tell do, us about the. I romper. actually do own a you male own a, oh, a denim God. one. He, ha- he had a very. <laughs> is it shorts or oh, pants? Yeah. It's shorts. He had a wow. very interesting denim. experience too. I did have an interesting Please experience share. about that, but um, I'll share that in a second. But the whole point of the uh, forum is to really just engage the the community. Um, this is not something that I'm looking to profit off of or anything like that. I really want to educate uh, the community and not just start with masculine. I mean, just really starting with masculinity and then going to other aspects. I mean, this is like a, an, it's an embryo phase right now. This is something I'm, I'm really, really passionate about that I wish I did before, but now I feel like I have an opportunity to do it. So why not? Um, but yeah, it's, I'm hoping to just educate and really just get people to come together in open their minds instead of allowing society to tell you what should a man should do or shouldn't do or dress or whatever. So. Right. So are you about like removing like the boundaries of what pe- are the things that conform? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, for me, I, I mean, I carry satchels, you know, man person stuff like that. I think it's, <laughs> hey, say, okay. it's I carry great. My mercy. With pride, <laughs> with, no, absolutely. I mean, I think it's it, it's just something I'm comfortable There's with. I like whole, with that. it's just the way it's designed. It, it's so you're a mantrosexual. And that's yeah, what you're gonna I mean, I'm okay with. Being. Yeah, I, I think that everyone should not necessarily be that, but be more accepting towards that, and not try to stereotype stereotypes when someone they based see. off of that. Yeah, yeah so. right. I, I and I you. think you know, I like how you're like whatever. Fuck it, I just do whatever I want. Like. You got your skinny pants on, you wear your loafers, and you're like, I don't care. I feel like more people should be able to just, like, 
say, fuck it. I'm going to do what makes me feel good. I'm going to do what I like rather than worrying about, you know, what somebody might say. People you don't even know. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm far more happy now that I don't care what other people think about how I dress and, you know, and stuff like that. So when did you lose your last fuck? Wait, what? Man, it was probably, <laughs> was like honestly, it, it was probably when I was still in high school. I mean, I was, I yeah. wasn't wearing, I was very versatile and high dressed. I mean, right. I still wore jerseys and throwbacks and stuff like that. And, but I still wore like button down fitted pants. There you, you know, go. Nice dress shoes and stuff like that. Do so you I, miss that fuck? You don't miss that fuck, do you? No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, you have to evolve at some point. I mean, and how I dress is very indicative of where I see myself, right? So, I mean, I, I think that it's important to, one, be comfortable in what you're wearing. And, Absolutely. And not be afraid to, you know, throw on a male romper. You know, well, you know? tell us real quick. Or checkered kind pants, of what, bitch. I'm sorry. Those checkered pants have nothing to do with rom him. <laughs> okay, it's so comfort. Um, just tell us real quick kind of what happened when you wore your romper out. Okay, so it was, it was my birthday weekend. Uh, me and uh, my partner, Ivan, who's the... Um, part of the millennial menace, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went out um, to a silent party. Um, it was it was fun. So far, so good. Everything's cool. And then one uh, woman approached me and was like, why are you wearing that? I'm like, what do you mean, why am I wearing that? And she's like, well, why are you wearing that? I'm like, why not? Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, you shouldn't wear that. I'm like, why not? Mm-hmm. She's like, well, I mean, I didn't think a man should where the, I was like, why not? The thing is, my why not is I want to understand why you feel that right. way rather than me getting defensive. I'm like, why not? I mean, please explain to me why. And she couldn't. So she eventually was just like, well, if that's what you want to wear, you know, going about your business. I was like, cool. And then the next ch- chick was, now she was talking about like, oh, your body type, you shouldn't wear that type of clothes. That's more built for someone who's more slimmer. I'm like, why do you feel that way? It's like, well, I mean, it's just my opinion, you know. I thought it was a, a two piece, you know, a denim shirt and some shorts you took. First of in. all, why the fuck would you wear that? Like, not a romper, but a denim shirt and denim shorts in 2017. This ain't 1991. Absolutely. I mean, denim pants, maybe you can get away with it. I those. mean, it's close yeah. enough to a denim pants. No. No, it's if not. You, it you saw the romper. It, a denim shirt and pants that looked like this romper that he had on would have been straight out of the 90s because it was like the light colored denim it, it she was wrong yeah I mean, okay. but i think with her i, I more i started getting upset because it was just kind of funny because it was like your body type i mean that's she's rude. like you're too big like, for that. Your face, like, though. No. but that's what you know and i could have all the time i could have came at her neck but you know me i'm i was just trying to be nice and let me find out it was dark right here right <laughs> <laughs> boy <laughs> Fired know. her up, but sorry. don't help. I'm sorry, but I mean it's this is a reality. I mean it's something I face all the time. Your pants too tight, you know why you wearing that and then yada yada yada. I mean it's nah, but I like that's what gets me. Like who the fuck are you to come up to somebody? Now I personally don't feel like I, I don't want the person I'm with wearing those skinny jeans because that's just not. I mean I don't think that's even for him. Whatever. Why not? But. It just it it just doesn't fit his personality. Like he it just he wouldn't wear them. Just I guess maybe because the person he is, it's just it's not for him. Period. And I mean we've discussed it before. Now he has done like a slender boot cut before, but that's about as thin as it goes. But I would never like outwardly attack somebody. Hey, why do you have on those skinny pants? Like who the fuck are you? Like why are you worried about what I have on? Like bitch, if I walked out with my pants on my head, who cares? Like. It has nothing to do with you. You're not buying my clothes. You don't take care of me financially. Like, get the fuck out of my business. That, to me, is wrong. Just because I may not agree with it. it, it's big bitches running around with skin tight shit on and shouldn't wear it. So, but I don't say nothing to their ass either. So, at the end of the day, like, let people fucking live. It's just, I'm not about the skinny jean thing. But I'm never going to come to you and say, you know what? You should not wear that. And why do you have that on? Who the fuck am I? Like, well, are you serious? Sharonda, hopefully you'll come out to the forum and, and you'll, um, you know. Yeah, please. No, come please come out I mean, bring to your the blanket. Forum. Yeah, bring your blanket. Um, I need a of blankets. Yeah. <laughs> Is it more Gemini's there too? Y'all need two each because y'all got personalities. You know? well, who knows? We're hoping that we get uh, a nice turnout, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, just okay. so people. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do some kind of uh, questions to be submitted, right? Or something yeah, like that. there's going to be mm-hmm. some questions that uh, if you want to – Come up with already pre-thought questions that you want to ask that will get the you know the panel 
thinking, talking, and thinking. Talking. Okay. I mean, because we really ultimately want crowd engagement. Right. I mean, because it's not gonna, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna feel like I've accomplished anything if the crowd is just sitting there quiet. So at this specific okay. forum, like, what are what is the maybe the topic or what is the masculinity? Mascul- masculinity. Okay. Um, but we're gonna delve into masculinity in different right. aspects. Okay. Like masculinity in the, um, in the household, raising kids and stuff like that. Masculinity. Right. Um, in the community, violence, etc., and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I think uh, fashion, sexuality as well. I right. think sexuality be very fun. I'm looking forward to that one too. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be good. I would totally go. I like fashion. Yeah, you guys. I hope you guys all come, and all of our listeners. I hope you guys show up too. So, like, when we get a little bit closer to it, I'll let everybody know where it's gonna Absolutely. be. And we're not charging you guys, so please come out. It's right. free, it's y'all. Free. It's for the free. It's for the free. Right. Y'all can go. I mean, because really, like he said, what we really want is just people to come out and kind of get involved with the cool. uh, conversation and build a community, if you will. It's a village. Um. So, how did you guys like the wine? Acho, feel free to jump in and rate the wine also. I mean, the wine to me, I mean, I'm biased, so it's like a <laughs> 10 out of 10, for me, so I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> the, the top score is actually 25. So it's 25 out of 25. Well, I mean, look, 25 out of 25. Right. Sharana? I'm going to say, or yeah. Or yeah, or yeah. you like it? Or yeah, okay. I like it. <laughs> Okay, but what is your number, though? Oh, my God. Listen, she um, needs the number because that's how we're choosing the wine of the month. Now. I know. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know. Okay. I'll go with a... 23? 23, yeah. Just because I didn't like the... the Like, I'm not drinking it anymore because I finished it because I have issues. But <laughs> the aftertaste... and It, it could was be, a little bit of an aftertaste, It, it could be... I, well, I thought it was maybe because I had gum before I came in. So that could be it. But mm-hmm. the aftertaste, like, when I'm not drinking it, I don't like. But when I'm drinking it, aftertaste, I like. I actually will agree with you on that. I like it when I'm drinking it, but I don't like... It's like a little bit of a bitterness. Yeah, just or a something tiny bit. Yeah. At, like, right at the end. I don't know what it is, but... Um, other than that, I like I liked it as I as it set out. I did aerate it. I feel like you okay. maybe need to start like aerating it more than once. Maybe you know do. what we need? Okay, we that's need what that, it is. Um, it's the oak. It's because mm-hmm. it was aged in oak barrels, and mm-hmm. that's what the aftertaste is. is the mm-hmm. oak. I didn't really taste an aftertaste. You didn't? I no. tasted it. I did. It tasted just like a regular red wine that I don't love. Yeah, and but it, I, but that's because I just don't. She's not a red wine. I really person. don't like red wine because I, huh. you say listen, <laughs> deep. You said sad. I really need y'all to get a little bit more into you know the wine descriptions. So then it'll be it start trying to get into the wine description, and you want to sigh real big. Mm-hmm. So whatever, twelve. <sighs> this bitch said twelve. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. She said twelve. Wow. Twenty. Twenty. I give it a twenty-two. I mean, I like a twenty-two or a twenty. A twenty-two, okay. Twenty-two, two. two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give it a twenty-two. I li- I like the taste of it. I just don't really like that aftertaste. Like mm-hmm. it, it's very. It's a, a very smooth tasting wine. I Actually, like it's yeah. a velvety finish, is what they say on the it's bottle. It's good, but it doesn't have the sweet. You know, I like something She's a little sweet. bit sweet. Yeah. A little bit sweet. No, it's not. Did you want some Moscato next time? No. I, oh, I mean, God. Uh, Moscato is really, really too sweet. Now that I'm a wine <laughs> connoisseur, I... Uh, Don't disrespect like that. No, <laughs> no it wasn't bad. But the last time we had a Malbec, I remember thinking, mm, it was, it was like straight. It's like a straight line. There was nothing, you know, surprising right. about it. You're it doing was just your like, shoulder. You, what is it called? The shoulder? Shoulder lean. No, no, no not the shoulder lean. The other shoulder dance. There is no other shoulder it dance. It is. I don't know. Do, uh, hit them with the shoulder, that one. Is that from 1977? No, no, no. It's from this year, this last year or something? I don't, I don't know. They play it on the Juke Joint radio station? I don't know. I saw a challenge. Bitch. Leave me alone. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> Anywho, anything else that anybody wants to add before we close out? No, I just want to thank you for coming on and talking to us about what it means to be a man in skinny jeans. <laughs> Those um, aren't even jeans. I'm That's sorry, like a skinny, twill. This skinny pants. Well, are they thing. breathable? It's a chino. Yeah, it's I can. Like I can breathe just fine. In these oh, things. it looks yeah. stretchy. It, yeah. it has a little yeah, bit of give. It has a little pants. bit of stretch. But you know what pants. I was going to say. Back in the day, James Brown, the Beatles, everybody wore pants like that, and they were like the hottest shit. 
even uh, people forget about Dr. Dre and his little group he was in. Oh, oh when he had the, the before the, you turn off the light, let's get no. He had the uh, what was that shiny sequence? The shiny sequence. sequence suit. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of that group? With jazz hands. Yeah, and that curl. Right. <laughs> With Alonzo, oh, the yeah. guy who ran the group. Oh, did y'all not watch Straight Outta Compton? I did not watch I it. Did. Okay. I know what you mean. What was the name of that group? I don't remember. I didn't watch the movie. Naya, what was the name of that group? Okay, never mind. All right. Um, <laughs> so thanks again, Nacho, for coming. And like I said, everybody, I'll let you guys know where to see us. Whenever the Millennial Minutes debut. Thank you for having me. You are most welcome. It's time for me to turn on my William Shatner voice. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, but it's just the wine. Anywho, Danielle. <laughs> please visit our website, www.betweenusgirlspodcast.com. Visit our iTunes and leave us a review. Or. Find one of our episodes on social media. Share it with your audience. Danielle? Bye. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on Between Us Girls. But don't keep it a secret. Listen and share with everyone you know. See you next week.